Dare Adventures of Biggles. At last, Biggles has located the missing papers. Although he hasn't yet seen the documents themselves, it seems certain that they're in the metal box the old negress Susanna Shaw dug up from the hut by the lagoon. In her own house, well hidden in the thornbush forest, Susanna tells her story to Biggles and Algie, and they take possession of the metal box. But they haven't time to move it from the hut. Ginger brings news that von Stahlhein is close by. He has come to bargain with Biggles. You're sure he's not where he can see this hut, Ginge? Positive. He's at least a quarter of a mile away. Tom has him bailed up in the forest. How did you say he came along? Well, we were scouting about in the thorn bush, as you told us, when we heard a shot. It was a fair way off, but we rushed off to investigate. After a few minutes, we heard von Stahlhein shouting out for you. He fired to attract attention, did he? Yes. We sneaked as close as we could without being seen and then bailed him up. But he didn't make any trouble. He's armed, though. Oh, not now. He threw down his rifle as soon as he saw us. He said he hadn't come to fight, but wanted to talk. Did he say what he wanted to talk about? Oh, the papers, of course. He, he wants to strike a bargain with you. That's all you learned from him? Well, I tried to pump more out of him, but he only laughed. He said he wanted to see your face when he told you of the trumps he held. Oh, it's a trick, Beagles. Let Jim's tell him to go to Blazers. If he wants to talk to me, it may be wise to give him a hearing. You aren't going to bargain with the swine. Ah, that's most unlikely. But I don't think we can afford to let him go without hearing his proposition. By Jingo, I'd watch him. I'll do that. Don't worry. Ginge, did he seem to have any idea that we'd found the papers? I'm sure he has not Biggles. Uh, Tom and I played dumb, of course. We acted as if he knew as much about them as we did. He's cunning enough to put on any act. Let me see him, Biggles. <laughs> do you think you'd handle him any better than I? No, Algy. You'd be more likely to plant a fish fist on his jaw. You stay here with Susanna to guard the box. Well, that's how you want it. I... And keep your eyes skinned in case this is part of a trick. You needn't worry about that. The box will be here when you come back. All right, Ginch. Lead the way to Starley. I'm growing curious about this trick. It's not far through here. As you can see, there's no sign of the clearing. Well, that part of it seems all right. Give Tom a call when we're close enough, Ginge. We don't want to walk into an ambush. He'll hear us now, I think. Are you there, Tom? Hello! Everything okay? Yes, except that this blight has smoked my last cigarette. <laughs> we'll make him pay for it one day. Keep your eye on him. He wants to know if Biggles is with you. I'm here. And I'm alert for any tricks, von Stahlhein. You better stay very quiet while I come up to you. Have your gun ready, Ginge. Anything's likely to happen. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Well, von Stahlhein. Ah, uh, Biggles, sir. So you answered my summons. You can cut out the palaver. If you've anything to say, come out with it. I shall. But you are so long, I was beginning to fear. Cut the cackle, I said. Tom, you watch him carefully while we talk. Don't hesitate to shoot if necessary. I won't, Biggles. And Ginge... Keep an eye on the scrub. Let fly if there's any movement. Roger. Really, Biggles, well, the odds are three to one. Are such precautions warranted? With you, precautions are always warranted. Well? As I told Hevelfate, I wish to strike a bargain with you. I don't bargain with crooks. Crooks? May I point out that you and I are on identical errands? We are serving different countries, that's so. all. The country I serve is my own. That has nothing to do with it. Oh, yes, it has. Particularly as this happens to be an English island, and anything found on it belongs to England. In other words, my assignment is official and legal. Yours isn't. I'll stick to the term crooks, thanks. No matter. To return to our bargain. You're not going to bite my head off this time? I'm waiting to hear what you have to say. When you've finished, I may bite. <laughs> <laughs> that is highly probable. <laughs> you see, we have captured your plane. A plane? But Bertie Lizzie... He also is in our power, with his pompous friend, the Kingston Chief of Police. You devil, von Stahlheim. 
How on earth did you work that? Oh, it was very simple. The plan occurred to me while you were being rude to Zoratov at the hut by the lagoon. That's why you pinned us in the hut. I felt you would appreciate my scheme. It is the type of plan you would make. I wouldn't take hostages. <laughs> then you would be foolish. That is my bargaining power. I see you hanged before I bargain with you. I don't think I shall be hanged yet. But you will be interested to know how foolish your men can be. How did you capture Bertie? It was Zoratov and Morgan. While I kept the hut covered, Boris went back for Morgan, and together they waited for your plane to come in. Stupidly, so stupidly, Lissy and the policeman came ashore and stood on the beach talking. The captive was easy. The policeman? You don't mean Colonel Summers? Of course. <laughs> and I assure you, he is most annoyed to be my prisoner. But uh, you didn't know he was on the plane? What have you done with them? They are alive and well, and will remain so unless you are foolish. Righto. Come on, out with it. What exactly do you want? The papers which Wolf, or Hagen as you know him, hid on this island. Your friends will be free to dawn tomorrow if the papers are in my possession by that time. I'm certainly not giving you the papers. You have them? I didn't say that. And as I pointed out to you earlier today, I'd be most unlikely to tell you if I had. I wonder... You say dawn tomorrow. Suppose you haven't the papers by then. They will die. You see, I reasoned that you could do my work for me. You would have the remainder of this day and tonight in which to find the documents and bring them to me. Uh, but, of course, if... Uh, you have found them already. You can forget that one. Do you have anything more to say? Nothing. Except that you would be most unwise to attempt to rescue your friends. If you are seen near the yacht, they will be killed at once. You're a ruthless devil. Practical, my friend. When you are ready to return the papers, take them to the aircraft. Either Zoratov or I will be there to receive them. Is it all clear? Perfectly. And I've had about as much of you as I can take this afternoon, so clear out. There's a nasty taste in my mouth. And oddly enough, it's making my fist itchy. I am going. Be wise, Biggles, sir. Good afternoon. Biggles, what can you do? Don't talk about it here, Tom. Let him get out of sight. I know. We'll go back to the hut. We've some thinking to do. There's only one way out, Biggles. What's that? Hand over the papers. Oh. We can't leave Bertie and old Summers to be killed. We're not going to give up the papers. Not after all the trouble we've had to find them. No use being noble about it, Ginge. He holds the cards. Bertie and Summers. Then we'll have to get them away from him. It's at least 14 hours. We can do it. How? By tackling the Vega, of course. Good grief, there are four of us. We should be able to put up some sort of a scrap. But don't you remember what he said? If any of us are seen near the yacht, Bertie and the chief will be killed. Ah, oh, he was bluffing. He put up a darn good fight to hang on to them, but I don't think he'd kill them. With von Stahlheim, Ginge, you can't rely on that. If it would serve his purpose, he'd kill anyone. But how would this serve his purpose? He'd lose two valuable hostages. I wonder how valuable they'd be to him if he knew we had the papers. But he doesn't know that, surely. You didn't tell him, Beals. I think I did, Alty. What? Or rather, I made him suspicious of it. I was angry and upset about what he told me, and I made a foolish remark. I'm quite sure he suspects. Biggles. What is it, Tom? Look out the window. Hmm? No, don't show yourself. Just glance over the edge of the thorn bush. I can't see anything. I saw a movement just now, as if a man ducked from one bush to another. I'm sure there's someone over there. Did you see who it was? No, he moved too fast. It's what you were saying, Biggles. Von Stalin suspects we have the papers. He sent someone to find them. Or spy on us. But we'll trick him. Alfie, you and Ginge stay here. Guard the box. Roger. Tom, you come with me. We'll walk over casually as if we're heading back for the coast. Then when we're close enough, we'll dive on this bloke. Righto. I'll lead you close to the bush where he's hiding. Good. Now talk about something quite different. Don't let him know we've seen him. And because of that, they made me a sergeant. Oh. Actually, I was too young for promotion, but Colonel Summers thought I could hold down the job. To your right, Biggles. That dead bush. Good. Stand by to jump him. Do you like the work, Tom? Must become very hot out here in summer. Oh, it's not too bad. Now, get him, Tom. 
Together, Biggles and Tom Haymans leap at the dead thorn bush. Is there a man hidden behind it? Has von Stalin guessed their secret? Be sure you're listening for the next thrilling chapter of The Air Adventures of Biggles. Biggles.